Let's bring in former Atlanta Fed President Dennis Lockhart. He held the post during the height of the financial crisis. Dennis, it's always great to get your take on things. Um, first question to you. Dan brought this up. Does the committee get a sneak peek at data before it's officially released to the public? I don't know what the practice is today. When, when I was on the committee, my understanding was that the chair got the report the night before. So that would be Thursday night for the jobs report. And then the rest of us, we got it like everyone else gets it. So uh, I don't think to, uh, two days in advance they have the actual report. They may have economists who have looked at all the underlying data and come up with something close to that report. So what's your take, and this, I guess this is the corollary, this, the second part to this question, what's your take on, on the statement appearing to be dovish, but then ha uh, uh, Powell appearing to be pretty hawkish during the conference? Uh, well, I can certainly see how that, uh, that, that conclusion has been drawn by people. I was a little surprised that the statement really provided some guidance, you know, with key words, as, uh, as Steve said earlier, restrictive uh, was a key word, uh, lags was a key word. Uh, but they, the, the thing that surprised me most was that uh, we got a fair amount of soft guidance of how this cycle is likely to play out. And I think uh, the c committee and Powell set the table for a step down in December, but he's not going to commit to that. It's not, uh, you know, it's not a sure thing, but he certainly kind of began the preparation of the markets for, for that possibility. Uh, but at the same time, hawkish in saying that uh, they have a long way to go yet, and that, and this is important, I think, that the terminal rate is likely to be above the September SEP rate. That, that got my attention. So uh, I was just wondering, uh, Powell mentioned that the, uh, the Fed funds rate is nowhere close to, to being at peak, uh, and once it got there, would remain there for, for some time. How would you define some time? Is it six months, nine months, <laughs> 12 months? Like, what are the cues that the Fed is going to be looking at? Well, I think you have to kind of put together a scenario, and one plausible scenario is that Inflation is stubborn. It doesn't really respond. Uh, the, we get noisy month over month and quarter over quarter numbers, and the Fed is just not convinced that they're getting the inflation rate moving in the right direction. It could be months even well through 2024 that they're on hold at some level, you know, trying to get an indication that the job is getting done. And... Uh, you know, at this point, I think you have to keep that scenario in mind that, that this inflation problem maybe just will not abate quickly. Dennis, is there a chance that we could get to the end of this hiking cycle without unemployment rate going up meaningfully? Um, you know, some economists, strategists are suggesting that we really are going to need to see 4 percent, maybe 5 percent, that sort of thing. I think it was interesting that Fed Chair Powell did mention that maybe we just see fewer job openings. Is that a likely scenario? I would say that, that the, the circumstances uh, allow you to think that you could get that kind of a soft landing, if you will, meaning that uh, they keep tightening and uh, the inflation rate comes down, but they don't have a serious unemployment problem or you know a market increase in unemployment. That could happen simply because the participation rate is lower than it was pre-COVID, uh, the job openings in the economy even if overstated by the surveys, still appeared to exceed the labor supply. And you could get a situation where supply and demand of labor just closes, but it doesn't result in 5% plus unemployment. I think that that scenario could play out. Last quick question, Dennis. Uh, he was asked about the possibility of soft landing at this point. He said the window is smaller, but it's still possible. Is he being too optimistic? What's your assessment? I think the longer we have persistent inflation, the, the, the more optimistic that looks. Because one thing he said, which I think is very important here, and I'm putting, putting words in, 
Right, we, we apparently have uh, some audio issues with Dennis. <coughs> Dennis Lockhart, uh, we thank you. Dennis is out there talking maybe still. <laughs> I would have loved to have heard his uh, answer to that question. So he, so they could be on hold through 2024? I mean, that's, that's a long time to have higher rates. I don't think well, we see, are... I would submit it's the exact right amount of time to get us back to some oh, semblance. Of... No, no, I'm not but, arguing but, with you, but no, I, I I'm hear not what saying you're... right or wrong. I'm, yeah. I'm just saying it's a long time oh, that I don't think the market is is thinking about. Yeah. Maybe they should start because they're combating 15 years of excess and they're trying to do it now with all the things they're putting in place correctly, by the way. So I don't think it's preposterous to think we can have rates at elevated levels for the foreseeable future all of next year. The equity market doesn't want to hear that. That's just too bad. That's the environment that we put ourselves in over the last decade and a half of a basically, a, I would use this word because I'm about to, a reckless Federal Reserve. And, and, and it's, a, it's a process of, to Guy's point, if the equity market should have ever been here, right? So you, you can't disprove prove the counterfactual, but should we have ever been looking at an equity market of 4,800 in the S&P? With the environment, right. with rates where they were, yes. Where rates where they're going for a longer period of time, no. I, I love the word preposterous. I mean, it's like one of the best I words out there, right? Uh, <laughs> I think it's preposterous to think that we're going to have a soft landing. You know, uh, listen, soft landing, hard landing, there's a clear landing, and the landing is not good. I mean, that would be quite the magic trick, right? I mean, I, you know, David Copperfield would be quite proud of that, and, and there's just no chance it's going to happen, in my view.